Okay, now we're circling back to um, Michael R. Hi, Dave. I recently watched George Carlin's American Dream documentary on HBO. He is my all-time favorite comedian. I was lucky enough to see him at St. John's University in New York many, many years ago. Groucho Marx and Rodney Dangerfield round out my top three. Who would be your all-time favorite comedian and your top three? <laughs> and this was the question this time around where I went, uh, no, comedians, I can't just start babbling uh, we're trying to keep these to, to three hours and two hours if we possibly can. So uh, here's my uh, page and a half. Uh, this, this, is, this is going out to you, Michael R. of Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, you can't really, quote, get, unquote, George Carlin without Lenny Bruce. Uh, from the essential Lenny Bruce, is Lima, Ohio routine. And uh, I faxed that through to you, Matt. I don't, this is real inside baseball stuff. If you want to run it on a moment of service, go ahead. But I was just doing it to go. If you're a George Carlin fan, uh, then you, I think you really, you really need to, uh, if you can get a copy of the essential Lenny Bruce, which is probably hard to find, uh, and if you can't, Dave's going to fax you uh, Lenny Bruce's Lima, Ohio routine, which I referenced in my cover letter, which I left with a couple of copies of Cerebus at Center in the Square when Denny and I went to see uh, George Carlin. Uh, I, I don't remember how I re exactly phrased it, but, quote, uh, give us a call. Kitchener is like the Lima, Ohio of Canada. Denny will make you dinner, and we can give you a tour of the apartment, unquote. I'm sure George Carlin got the reference as a huge uh, uh, Lenny Bruce fan himself. Lima, Ohio only means one thing to comedians in, in that day and age, and it's Lenny Bruce's Lima, Ohio routine. Uh, George Carlin is, quote, toned down, unquote, Lenny Bruce, which was a tough juggling act. Too toned down and you're pandering. Exceed him and you're the one getting busted for obscenity, uh, which George Carlin was once, caught in the police sweep and sharing the back of a police car with Lenny Bruce, uh, which you can read about in the definitive file, Ladies and gentlemen, Lenny Bruce. Um, Bruce's autobiography is the hands down funniest book title ever. How to Talk Dirty and Influence People. Uh, very nice of him to mail us a signed photo a couple of weeks later. So I got uh, Rolly to take a picture of me uh, holding up the uh, to Dave and Denny uh, autograph photo that, uh, that we got in the mail from uh, from George Carlin. It's not like I was holding my breath uh, uh, that he was going to come over for dinner, uh, having compared Kitchener to Lima, Ohio. Uh, very uh, Groucho, I don't really consider a comedian. Be inclined to think that the Groucho character was co-created by George S. F. Kaufman in The Coconuts and midwifed by Alexander Wolcott. Um, arguing against myself, which is always fun, Groucho was the only actor allowed to ad lib in a Kaufman script. Uh, Groucho and me and Groucho's letters are comedic writing as opposed to stand up, uh, and I consider them the A list Groucho as opposed to something like uh, You Bet Your Life. So that's why I'm getting really technical and saying, mm, don't really consider Groucho a comedian. Uh, Dangerfield, I'll give you that one. Uh, my number one would be Richard Pryor. And I can't cite Richard Pryor without citing Bill Cosby, uh, the Malcolm X and Martin Luther King of what was then called, quote, colored comedy, unquote. unquote. 
modern equivalent would be Lamar and Drake's Not Like Us Kid. Bill Cosby made Richard Pryor possible in the same sense that Martin Luther King made Malcolm X possible. Uh, both Cosby and Pryor arguably can be sourced from Red Fox, who worked, quote, too blue, unquote, for the TV age to ride the same wave that Bill Cosby and Pryor wrote. But uh, definitely in the same sense that uh, Martin Luther King was the popular one, uh, Malcolm X was the unpopular one, uh, you've got the you've got the same re relationship uh, between uh, uh, Cosby and 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 Richard Pryor. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll leave that one there. But but I have to I have to I have to cite both of them uh, in order to say uh, I don't want to make it sound like Richard Pryor just came out of nowhere. Um, but yes, Richard Pryor's live performances. For me, are skyer no higher. If you want to see somebody at the top of the comedic game, um, personally for me, Richard Pryor's the guy. Uh, Freddie Prince is underrated, I think, because of his suicide. When he was on, capital O-N, he was on, capital O-N. Uh, there's a very vivid description by co-star Jack Albertson in the Playboy article, Good night, sweet prince, of the difference between walking through the Chico and the Mad pilot rehearsal and being on exclamation mark for the actual taping in front of a live audience. For a fellow professional, a fellow actor like Jack Albertson to go, this was jaw dropping that you're going, well, you know, I think we're all, we're all doing our bit. Uh, we hope it's a successful show. And then um, Freddie Prince just came out and smoked, and you can smoke the, the whole room, and you can just hear the reaction uh, in the pilot. Uh, the pre Mork and Mindy Robin Williams, who I only saw once on Peter Zowski's CBC show the summer before uh, Mork and Mindy came on, uh, was in that same category. No one knew until then that you could be that on <laughs> and it's like considering uh, the way robin williams and freddie friends both ended up mm, arguably you don't want to be that on because it uh, it tends to spill over into um you're 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 burning the candle at both ends and this doesn't end happily uh my trips with Lenny Henry to and from the BBC in 2000 when he was working on Lenny Henry in Pieces uh, was my only experience riffing with a professional comedian. Do an idea in a funny voice, and he'll try and talk it. And I'd try to keep up. Both of us smiling, but not laughing, because good riffing requires staying in character. It was like being a professional boxer's sparring partner. As I'm always saying to the uh, service and hell guys, find the funny. What's funny about the concept? Zoom in on that and emphasize it. And doing that with a professional comedian, you go like, yeah, I, I, I'm good at this. I, I, <laughs> I got my moments, but mm, it's the same difference between somebody who likes to golf and a professional golfer. So the photos you're looking at are of me. Uh, 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 oh, are, are of me and are of uh, Lenny filming the title sequence uh, for Lenny Henry in pieces. Um, uh, there's one shot in particular. Uh, it, it was him running up to a uh, um, transparent. Uh, transparent sort of heavy plastic thing and being filmed from the other side where it looks like he's smashing his face into the camera lens and flattening it and then backing up and having another go at it. And he was on the other side of the plastic and getting ready to, uh, uh, to do, to do the run up. And, uh, uh, they, they weren't ready to film yet. So it's like, well, I'll sneak around the corner and take a picture of him. 
and it's like somebody coming around the corner to his space, and he whooped a look on me that I took a picture of before he went, oh, it's Dave, he doesn't know any better, <laughs> which I did. Um, so uh, that's one of the things is, is the title sequence. There's pictures of uh, me and Lenny at his party, uh, pictures of me with Don French, uh, his wife at the time, uh, who had flown me over to surprise him on his 40th birthday. Uh, and then uh, at the CBC in makeup, uh, he's being fitted for his little orphan anyway. He was riffing on the idea of affirmative action. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't let a black man over six feet tall play the lead in Annie is racial prejudice. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar. Anyway, uh, Lenny and I riffed on a movie script of his at one point. Uh, he was looking for more of a collaboration, and it turned out. And I wanted to try being a script doctor. Uh, it was a high fantasy script, and I basically retyped it, trying to find the funny. And wrote a big part for Steve Martin because Lenny is a huge Steve Martin fan. That was a major cringy deal breaker for Lenny. My perspective was, send him the script. The worst he can say is no. Uh, if he says yes, you get to work with Steve Martin. If he says no, you can play the Steve Martin part, which Lenny did in whiteface at a wig in one of his specials. It's an amazing, absolutely amazing experience. Oh, it's an unannounced Steve Martin kiss spot. Steve Martin's unmistakable. Why is the shape of his head a little off? Oh my God, it's Lenny Henry doing Steve Martin. Anyway, I had this bit uh, uh, in the movie that I wrote where Steve Martin, who was uh, the sadistic villain, starts to say, well, excuse me. And we cut away to all of his underlings brightening up and smiling. He's going to say it. He's going to say it. But being the sadistic villain, he gets to the second or third you and stops and sneers and goes, no. And they all go, oh. The only other line I remember writing was, we have to get out of here. Pronto. And Steve Martin's sidekick goes, yes, Kiyosami. And he goes, not Pronto. Pronto. Uh, okay, I've been fasting all day. That does it for me, Matt. Well, that, that was pretty good, Dave. Uh, thanks. No problem. Uh, I, 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 still, I still like that line. I like that line. We have to get out of here. Pronto. Yes, Kim Osami. Not Pato. Pato. All right, we'll, we'll do this again next month, Matt. Have a good night. You too, Dave. Good night. Bye-bye.